Hi everybody, this is Maya Good, and this is a video on how my identity as a writer has changed. I've noticed over the past couple months, um, the word artist has entered my vocabulary in a way that was really unexpected and very natural, and um, and I wanted to discuss that a little bit. Uh, when I was young, I definitely identified as an artist. I was an actor. I um, dabbled in painting, I dabbled in poetry, I dabbled in fashion design. I actually went to fashion design school uh, for a year, but uh, my core art was acting. And, and then later on, I became a dancer, and I approached my dancing in a very different way from the other girls that I worked with. Um, a lot of them which is put on what was popular at the time and they would just dance to it and and I always had the propensity for making sets and really um, putting artistic vision in my sets much to the chagrin of my DJ often because often those sets were not um, were not what the average set looked like so uh, let's just put it that way yeah I was a little rebellious in those years as a youngster oh gosh Try to imagine 19 year old me and I just shake my head and they go, oh, so much pain, so glad there's no video. What would have happened if there was Facebook and YouTube back then? I actually feel bad for kids nowadays uh, because at least I got to make all my mistakes off camera. So beside the point, uh, for the last four years I've identified as a writer. Uh, that, identi that label came with a lot of internal work. It was very hard for me at first to admit I was a writer. It was even harder at first to admit that I was a literary writer. I really fought it. Everyone I knew wrote genre fiction, considered literary fiction pretentious and unmarketable and stupid. And I, I really struggled with those identities. But gradually over time, uh, those identities felt right. Uh, I began to put on the clothes and move around in it and realize it was comfortable. And uh, Coming here to New Orleans, I found an amazing writing community, and I, I attend multiple writers groups. I attend an art salon, um, and I've been reading much more difficult work over the past two years. Um, short stories of all kinds, poetry of all kinds. Uh, my novel reading has significantly changed and the way I look at my stories has changed. Um, we were just talking about this on the Bradbury Challenge the last time we recorded where all of us had had like significant changes in our writing this year. And, and I'm sure a lot of that has to do with doing the Bradbury Challenge. Me in particular, one of the things that happened was uh, I started to recognize my, the way I write. And before I would, do multiple revisions and I would get really caught up on trying to find the right word and I would have people say okay it's ready to send in and I'm like no it's not this word is wrong <laughs> and um, and spending time searching for those details spending time trying to decide does this mean enough can it mean more it was something that I, I, I felt a little self-indulgent in doing I felt like I, I wasn't um, wasn't putting out my work fast enough that there was no reason for me to take all that time but I craved it I craved that time and a year ago I, I messed around with the idea of a pen name um, that would be more marketable that would be something that I could self-publish that would sell that would be targeted to a specific group of people and that I could make decent income on and I just couldn't do it. Something in me was like a block. And every time I would sit down to work on it, I wanted to work on past or I wanted to work on a short story. And then I moved here. And in this space, um, most of the people I, I live with are musicians. Um, there's There were a couple painters. I think now there's only one. Um, there were no other writers. Now there's one other writer. There's dancer. Um, a lot of different people doing different stuff and I joined the art salon which is a space where different artists in whatever medium they work 
bring in something to share one night every three weeks. And as I've been around these people, I'm starting to recognize certain patterns in the way we think. And I'm recognizing that I think the same way too. So, you know, when I was talking to a roommate about the song he's been working on for several years, and it's just not right. And he goes over and over and over and over it. And he really probably could just knock it out and sell it to somebody, but it's not right. And as he was talking about it, I was like, oh my gosh, I feel that. Like, that is the same thing I feel. And then talking to another artist about wanting my writing to mean more than just being fun. And there's nothing wrong with fun, but I was having this urge to acknowledge the undercurrent of my stories and the multiple layers underneath my stories. And he was talking about that as well. And I, I saw that in myself, even though we work in completely different mediums. And I think um, the change in my reading has definitely affected this. You know, uh, up until a couple years ago, I didn't read a lot of fiction anymore. I did as a kid. I did as a teenager and young adult, but I stopped when I had the kids. And from the t for the next 18 years, I would read maybe a novel or two a year. And they were all just simple, fun, escapist fiction. And over the last two years, I've been reading some amazing work. And I realized that that's the type of writer I want to be. Uh, and I've gotten to the point where I read some work and I think this was fun. I read other work and I think this is art. And I don't know what that distinction is um, because it's not a devaluing of the fun writing. I mean, fun writing is important. It takes you away to other lands. It gets you away from your day. It, it's healthier than drinking. But there's something about writing that is art that makes you reevaluate your being on this planet. And, uh, and so as these things have been happening, I've noticed my language has changed and it finally came to a head um, a few days ago, I was struggling with a story and I I took my sex doll story to a couple people that I work with. The, one of the guys that runs one of the writers group I work with, um, I, I brought it to him and I said, hey, um, I don't have anything to critique this week. I know that you don't have a lot um, coming in this week for critiques. Can we take what I have and brainstorm it and try to unblock me? Try to figure out what's wrong because I've tried it this way. It's not working. I've tried it this way. It's not working. And I can't see what's wrong with it. And a bunch of people canceled and it ended up being me and his girlfriend. And she's a musician, but she's also an editor. And we were just sitting around the table drinking wine, talking about the story. And I felt so much relief to have people that I could turn to like that creatively. You know, um, she mentioned that she's, people have called her a, a Maria Stein. And um, I think that's appropriate. You know, it, it definitely had that feel. And just to sit around and talk about art. And then afterwards she sung a song for me and it was amazing. And this was just several days after I had gone to her dinner party because she's a chef and she started doing these private, intimate um, dinners with eight people. And these, I walked in this room with eight people. I don't know any of them except for one. I knew, I knew her boyfriend. I'm assuming they're not married. Um, but that was the only person I knew at the time. And... I'm like in this room and I'm recognizing that I am the only broke person in the room. And I've got, you know, a, a multiple New York Times best-selling historical novelist on one side of me. I've got a painter on the other, other side of me who used to do talent on Broadway and his Broadway talent wife who did talent on Broadway in the 80s is opposite me. And I'm just surrounded by these really high power old school art types from New York 
and I, I realized that in another time I would have felt really uncomfortable. Uh, you know, coming from the Bay Area, I've spent way too much time in rich people's houses feeling uncomfortable. And this time I didn't feel uncomfortable. I looked around the table and there was a common denominator. We were all artists with the exception of two people. We were all artists and those two people are art lovers. And there was this wonderful symbiotic, symbiotic relationship between us um, as they talked about working on Broadway and bringing in actors and all these people that they knew. And um, I, I recognized them both as artists and as patrons. And it started me thinking about this relationship between patrons and artists that goes back, you know, way before Michelangelo and we need each other <laughs> in the truest sense of the word you know uh, one of the ladies was talking about Michelangelo and you know the reason why we have so few sculptures of him from him is because he was constantly having to make the decision between doing a sculpture that he loved and doing a sculpture in order to pay for a place to live and food and boys and alcohol <laughs> and and this conversation came about because I was talking about trying to revive this pen name so that it could fund me to create the writing that I really want to be doing. And this conversation was so vibrant and the food was so beautiful. It was the best food I've had in my life. Like I've gone to Green's restaurant. I have eaten at amazing restaurants in New York, San Francisco, Oakland, Berkeley, all these amazing places, and this was the best food I've ever had in my life. It was five-star restaurant food in this tiny house filled with artists, all talking craft and art and culture. And I felt at home there. Uh, it was such an amazing feeling, and uh, the next day I was thinking about it, and I went on Twitter, and I was thinking about how much that environment felt like what I imagine those types of environments felt like in the 20s and the 30s where groups of artists would come together with groups of patrons and they would sit around and eat dinner and talk about craft and art and shows and and how they fed off of one each other and, and for the first time in my life I had that experience and it was amazing it was vibrant and then two days later, I, I, I literally got my story unstuck. And the story is so amazing now compared to where it was. Like, it was an awesome idea that I couldn't get a t title for. And then I'd written in first person and I'd written in third person and nothing worked. And suddenly, this vision, like, I showed this pile of crap to somebody and they looked at it and they're like, this is what you're trying to say. I'm like, how did you know? Like, I have another notebook where I had brainstormed it. And the themes and symbols that I had listed in that, she caught immediately because she understands art. And she's like, well, in order to show that more fully, this is what you need to do. I'm like, how did I not see that? Like, it was so obvious. It was right in front of me. And it took this exchange of ideas, this exchange with another artist for me to see it. Um, you know, I know that the fear of talking with agents, the fear of going to writers conferences and sitting down and talking with people that are quote unquote above me is gone now. And I, because I feel like I belong there now. And I know that with every inch of my soul. Like, I know that if I had gone to a meeting with an agent three weeks ago, I would have been a wreck. I would have been sitting there like a little kid at the big kid table that doesn't belong. And I know for a fact that now if I were, if that were to happen, I would sit there with my head held high because I belong there because I'm an artist. Um, I don't know why it took so long because... Like I said, I identified as an artist when I was younger. Uh, anyone that talked to me, they would say, what do you do? And I would be like, I'm in school and I'm an artist. It was like the second thing out of my mouth. 
and say, what kind of art do you do? I'm an actor, and I paint, and I draw, and I design clothes. Like, that's what would have come out of my mouth. And then after I stopped doing those things, I would say, well, what do you do? I'm a stripper. And I do crazy artistic shows on stage that nobody can appreciate and that my DJ gets pissed off at. <laughs> and now when someone says that, what do you do? I'm an artist. I'm a writer. I am an artist. I'm a writer. When someone says, what kind of writing do you do? I no longer feel like I have to be an apologist for writing literary fiction. And even more amazing, I've actually started admitting that I'm a poet. Thank you, New Orleans. No matter where I go from here, New Orleans gave me that. My name is Maya and I'm an artist. I'm a writer and a poet and a short story author. And someday I will be the type of writer that I want to be and I will change minds with my words. Wow. I can't like saying those words and feeling so at home in them as far as like the list of best things that have happened in my life, having twins, being able to say those words. I don't think life as an artist gets better than that.